The Switch has been selling super well, bolstered by mega hits like Super Mario Odyssey, yet some publishers still are wary. After new information today, though, that might change. What's going on, everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. I've got Gabe here, and we have a number of interesting stories talking sales, Switch titles, and more. The first coming from Ubisoft, who revealed that the Nintendo Switch uh, titles accounted for 19% of their recent quarter sales, and that is only 1% lower than Xbox One titles, which is incredibly impressive considering how many more games are available from Ubisoft on Xbox One. They also noted that Mario plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle outperformed expectations, uh, and that they are sitting pretty in part thanks to excellent Switch sales. And, of course, they do have other games on Switch, Rayman, Just Dance, uh, things of that nature. And, yeah, neither of those, like, jumps out at me right away and says, like, big sellers. Um, but I don't think that um, Rabbids alone accounted for all of this. But it's really weird to see that the total sales uh, for Ubisoft, again, for, for the quarter, only 1% behind Xbox. That's an insane thing. Uh, because, like you mentioned, they have so many other uh, games available on that platform. Uh, and I don't know if this includes them, but, you know, there are, like, Xbox, uh, uh, or, like, more 360 games. Backwards compatible, that's the word I was looking for. The backwards compatible games, I don't know if they're accounted into this or not, but there's, like, a ton of older Ubisoft games on Xbox that I don't, I'm not 100% sure that they're counted here, but I think they are. Um, yeah, well, it's just extra, extra interesting because... Just last week, we saw EA saying that, hey, we kind of want to wait for a year of Switch in order to commit uh, more properties, more IP to the platform. We saw Capcom say, hey, you know, we're not really in the business of putting titles out on brand new consoles. But these numbers here state that, hey, the Switch is a major player and not just a secondary console, but it's up there rivaling, at least for Ubisoft, Xbox One, which is going to, at least from Ubisoft, demand so much more attention. Now, we have seen Capcom uh, kind of flip-flop since last week. They now come out and say that, hey, their financials are doing incredibly well. The company is growing, which is awesome, a dramatic 248.4% increase year over year. And they specifically said that Monster Hunter uh, performed incredibly strongly on Switch and that Ultra Street Fighter 2, the final challengers, was a smash hit, surprisingly, since we didn't think that was going to go anywhere. Um, but they really now seem to be putting a lot of a, a lot of clout behind their switch properties and maybe they will will about face and do more as well. We know they have Resident Evil Revelations 2 coming out later this month. Um, so that's a nice 180 to see and then just to tie in one more here, Bandai Namco came out and said that they as well uh, didn't think the switch would be that big of a success, but now that they've seen it, they are putting three uh, new exclusives early next year on the hybrid platform. When I originally saw that Bandai was bringing three new games to Switch, I automatically thought Dragon Ball Fighters, but then I, I read exclusives. So these are going to be brand new in some way, uh, whether they be uh, like continuations of existing franchises or something completely original. I think that's going to be exciting. And you have to like wonder if now with the success of Rabbids, uh, does that not just become a franchise at this point? Because it did so well, and it exceeded their expectations, so why don't you do a uh, Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle 2 or something? Or maybe just another mix-up of franchises. It doesn't necessarily have to be Mario. Uh, there are other uh, properties that Nintendo has. They have Donkey Kong, they have, they have Zelda, and you could keep going, that they could mix with the Rabbids and uh, have fun with in that in that way as well. But like you said, it's just so good to see all of these third parties basically, uh, some in some cases, do a complete 180. Uh, and others like Ubisoft, they've, they've been behind the Switch the entire time, but now it's paid off for them. Right, it's great to see that payoff. And I think this may start uh, the sort of snowball effect of let's get as much on the Switch as possible with the sales figures and with the impending big boom that we know Nintendo is going to get from the holiday period, maybe we will see more of this Bandai Namco strategy of, hey, let's push as much out as we can. They're putting three exclusives the first half of 2018, and we know that companies were a little bit, you know, restrained this first year, but we kind of predicted that if the Switch sells as well as Nintendo plans for it to, that 2018 would see this surge of third-party support and hopefully this is a sign uh, of things to come. Um, I think, you know, like you mentioned, it'd be interesting to see more crossovers. I, I have to imagine there's got to be other publishers out there looking at that. You know, we have Koei Tecmo, who's made the Warriors games with Nintendo. We have uh, Ubisoft, who made Mario Plus Rabbids. Other people have to be making inquiries, right? They have to be calling up Miyamoto, calling up Reggie, and being like, who you got 
out for loan, right? They have to, that has to be a thing, which is very cool. Um, on the, specifically on the Bandai Namco front, uh, these three exclusives sort of, uh, well, not sort of, absolutely do not include a Dark Souls port, but I think that that's more likely than ever at this point. Um, and I, I hope that, I hope that all companies kind of take this, this outlook. I mean, if, if nothing else, we do have some major ones on board. Um, and I think it'll be interesting to see how many of the mainline Ubisoft franchises make it to switch. And that's kind of my, well, that's where I was going to go. Uh, for these, yeah. fr- these franchises, maybe, maybe let's, let's go through these companies, uh, very slowly here or not, I mean, not too slowly, but Bandai Namco, the slowest, the, what do they have? They have Dragon Ball, they have Tails, they have Dark Souls. Right, that, uh, I, those are the big ones. Uh, Pac Man, I mean, I guess. But what? What? Uh, Pac Man's coming to switch in some way, I would assume. Uh, and we know that Tails is as well. Yes, we also know that Tails is as well. Uh, you know, is it the next mainline game? Is it a port of one of the existing games? Who knows? But Tails is coming. Um, so, what do you think? We get some of everything. Uh, Dragon Ball Xenoverse did very well on Switch, according to the Bandai Namco. So, more Dragon Ball. I think the the big question kind of is what route do they take and how do things go? You know, we saw EA say that FIFA, it you know definitely didn't outperform expectations. It seems to have underperformed, whereas Mario Plus Rabbids outperformed. So, is the strategy to make more exclusives? You know, is that what Bandai Namco is kind of seeing here versus ports? So, does Ubisoft dedicate resources and teams to exclusive development for Switch, or do they you know look and say, okay, our next Watch Dogs, our next AC, our next you know Far Cry, whatever? We're going to start prepping that for Switch. And I think that's kind of the fork in the road that I'm really curious to see. Um, Bethesda is interesting because they are taking the approach of, hey, let's put our main property. You know, we're getting Wolfenstein 2. It's it's late, but it's coming to Switch. Will Bandai Namco, will Ubisoft go more that route? Will EA go more that route? Or is the, the plan going to be let's put out exclusives um, and hope that they, by being exclusive, draw more attention than just, oh, a watered-down port um, of a previously existing, you know, title. And now that Capcom uh, revealed that, hey, the titles that they have put on Switch are doing well, you know, that they they have a lot of very ripe franchises that could be awesome on Switch. Mega Man, you know, one of, one of the big ones that comes to mind. Uh, Monster Hunter, of course, we got Double Cross, but that didn't come to America or any other territory that isn't Japan. Um, there is other Monster Hunter games coming to other platforms that are not coming to Switch, but Monster Hunter and Switch feels like it's such a perfect mix. At some point, we expect that to happen, and maybe I mean it did happen for Japan. We just need yeah, it to happen for, yeah, for I, world, I, you know, worldwide. Yeah. Well, what I mean by we expect for it to happen, I mean a, a new a Monster Hunter game that yeah. that isn't a remake of a 3DS game. For sure. Well, and I could see even, you know, say Revelations does well, maybe we get another... Capcom definitely did that in the past with 3DS and then, you know, ported it all over the place, but maybe they start with a, a new Resident Evil that originates on Switch and then can expand out. Um, you know, frankly, I, I like both ideas. I like being able to take something like Assassin's Creed on the go, but at the same time, I love more creativity and more original ideas. So I think it's a win-win for Switch fans. Either you're going to get big titles that you can then take with you portably, which is an awesome experience, or you're going to get brand new things. So maybe a you know perfect world scenario, we get a, a mix, right? Some companies decide to go more ports. Um, but it'd be interesting to see, you know, if we cataloged all the titles and if we get more and more sales figures, you know, where does the success lie? Obviously, we know the Nintendo titles sell incredibly well. Mario plus Rabbids seems to be a, a great example of an exclusive selling really well. Will things like Doom, Skyrim, Wolfenstein, will those perform? And I think after we have those releases, then it'll be even more uh, apparent what wh- where is the success lie for Switch, right? How are you going to compete with the Nintendo IP? And maybe, honestly, the way to do that is by innovating and by creating wholly original ideas versus just saying, like, hey, we got the Me Too version of, you know, Battlefront 2, or we got the Me Too version of whatever, Destiny or whatnot. I, th- I do think that those Me Too versions, they're not going to go well. I think FIFA is, might be a good example of that. It, I think if someone has the ability to play the superior version they're gonna do so and portability while important we saw that uh in the, in the chart uh, from a, a week or so ago you know most people are using this as a hybrid both uh, at home and on the go so but maybe the on the go nature isn't as important to everyone quite yet because 3ds is still around and maybe your phone whatever the case may be um so yeah i don't think of the the me too thing like you said is, is going to be quite enough 
but Mm -hmm. that's just my opinion and that's just based off whatever information we have now right i think a good one as well um, because it's day and date is going to be the upcoming lego marvel superheroes 2 that releases very soon um, and will be a nice sort of example of hey if you do put a game out day and date how does it do you know and we could see something that surprises we could all of a sudden see a whole lot of sales on that version that suck away sales from perhaps the xbox one version and and just even that alone is very interesting xbox one is releasing their new console um today and will that bolster sales or you know is it a software driven space which is where i i lean more i don't know that xbox one x is going to do much and could we see a scenario where in 2018 if, if microsoft doesn't get their act together with exclusives that switch overtakes xbox one in the sales chart like is that i mean it has already this year but for next year as it sort of progresses and as the initial boom begins to wear will we see a a shift of power yeah i mean that's gonna be tough and that's probably a conversation for another video uh but yeah i just feel like xbox has like such a leg up just because they've been out for a little while longer as far as uh this generation of consoles goes uh I, i think it it's difficult to close that gap for sure. And we'll have to see. But at least we have a lot of support coming, and you know that third party uh, is probably not going to be an issue in 2018. Early this year, we had conversations of, will it have support? Seems like it's going to have support. How much support, and in what ways is that support shown? We'll have to wait and see. Let us know your take. Are you more excited for ports of your favorite franchises being able to go portable, or are you more excited for original affairs like Mario Plus Rabbids? Let us know in the comments below. Let us know what companies you want on board. It sounds like Ubisoft is full force behind Bandai Namco as well, and Capcom, after seeing their financial uh, has flipped onto the Switch as well. We hope that EA, Activision, and others will jump aboard soon. Until that time, everybody, thanks so much for watching. We have a fantastic day. Let us know you're taking the comments down below. Subscribe if you want to stay up to date on all the latest and greatest from Switch as we head into a new year of releases. Until that time, though, for myself and Gabe, Switch Force out.